This is Lieutenant Sharon Blom of the Culver City Police Department, a 13-year veteran of law enforcement. She's the first woman officer in her city to reach the rank of lieutenant. This is Captain John Wayner. He is currently the commander of the patrol division of the Manhattan Beach Police Department, where he has been upholding the law for over 14 years. This is Officer Judy Fisher, a security guard at Paramount Studios in Hollywood. A 10-year law enforcement veteran, she comes from Fort Dodge, Iowa, where her father and uncles were police officers. Tonight, these and other law enforcement officials have come to the Mayfair Music Hall in Santa Monica to see and participate in the most unique stage performance in all of America. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Hollywood's hit hypnotist, Miss Pat Holland. pajama party for this evening. For those of you who have not had a chance to see my show before, I'm going to give you a very fast and a very brief explanation of what is about to happen. In a few moments, we're going to invite about five or six of you to come up on the stage and to volunteer to be hypnotized. Now, this is for real. And if you'd like to come up, you're more than welcome. Before we have you venture up here, though, I want to explain to you exactly how you're going to feel. See, most people do not understand the signs of hypnosis, and they seem to think if they come up here and go under, as we call it, that they're going to be unconscious and not know what they're doing, and believe me, gang, that's wrong. And most stage hypnotists don't explain it, which is equally wrong. You hypnotize yourself by taking my suggestions. You're relaxed, you're creative. Lots of hidden talents will come out, but you're not going to lose control. If anything, you'll gain control. You just have to be very, very sincere and want it. It's the most relaxed feeling in the world. I mean, just totally, totally relaxed. But it is entirely up to you. I say words, you concentrate physically, mentally, you relax, but you're not unconscious. You're totally aware of everything that's going on, just you listen only to my voice. And those of you that would like to be in the show, who really would like to be hypnotized, you are more than welcome. There are stairs on both sides. Just come on up, get in bed, and we'll start the show. Let's go. Oh, yes. Everybody, oh, did you want to try it, honey? All right. <laughs> okay. We have the people up here, and if you want to try it, you want to, all right, let me give you an example. What's your name, sir? John. John. Okay, we have a John down front. I love that. <laughs> That's perfect. We have a John down front. Okay. Say John were to go under, and then after the show, uh, John would like a suggestion. Stop smoking. You know what I would say. I'd say they taste bad. But say he were to go under, and I'd say, would you like to be in the show, and he didn't want to be in the show, I could not talk him into being in the show. I could not force him to be in the show. If he doesn't want to be in it, he wouldn't be in it. So if you want to try it in the audience, it's just a beautiful feeling. If you try in the audience, settle back, stare at one object or anything my voice tells you. Those are your stays, settle back in your seat. If you fly on the floor, hands up, keep your hands open, all right? Due to television regulations, the sound portion of Pat Collins' hypnotic induction of these six people will not be heard so as to ensure that none of you in the viewing audience will in any way have the possibility of being hypnotized by Miss Collins who has performed for over 20 years here in Los Angeles, in Las Vegas, and around the country. This is definitely one of the hottest tickets in town, as she has consistently played to sold-out audiences. And during those years, over 20,000 people have come up on her stage to be hypnotized. And in all those times, every single performance has been different, because no two people react the same while under hypnosis. At times, it may be hard to believe that the people on the stage are really under, but in the course of each performance, Pat does something that proves conclusively that they are. No one has ever left her show not believing that the people on the stage were really hypnotized. And now back to Miss Collins. Left arm is stiff and rigid as a steel bar. Your arm is now stuck high in the air. Left arm is now stuck high in the air and you cannot lower your arm. You cannot lower your arm, physically impossible. Physically impossible to lower your arm. Try and put it down, but you cannot. Try and lower your arm, but you cannot get it down. Now you realize that you are hypnotized. This is all there is to it. All of the sounds of my voice are in a far off distance. You continue breathing very, very deeply. You're having a marvelous time of suggestion. Left arm is as rigid as a piece of steel, and they're all <laughs> very, very good. Eyes are stuck tight. 
Oh, okay. What? Oh, no, we're losing? Oh, you're in and out? Or in and out? All right, okay, go ahead. All right, that's okay. All right, I'll be staged with deep receiver our back. So we'll do the show with five people instead of six, because we're working with law enforcement tonight, which is going to be absolutely hysterical. It's my turn to get them. I'm sorry, so what was your name? Frank. What? Frank. Frank, it was nice sleeping with you. It was a quickie. Uh, <laughs> all right, let me get the audience up so they can enjoy the show. All these people had a free nap out here. Okay, all of you in the audience, listen carefully. If you're hundred in the audience, when I count to three, I want you to wake up and enjoy the show. Those of you on the stage, when I count to three, relax your left arm and go deeper. Sleep one, two, and three. Sleep way down, deep sleep. Those of you on the stage, relax every muscle in your body. Continue to breathe very deeply throughout the rest of the show. Sound of my voice, touch of my hand. Music sends you deeper sleep. All inhibitions are gone. You're not embarrassed. You're going to have a marvelous time of suggestion. Enjoy this wonderful deep sleep. Continue to breathe very, very deeply. Everybody else in the audience okay? All right? Okay, fine. All right, tonight we have a special theme. They're all law enforcement, so we're going to have a lot of fun. Everybody else okay? You feel good? You feel really up to this? Huh? I have a nice round of applause for people who are up here and under because they can hear you. All right, very good. Uh, all right, let me explain to you what I do. I spend the first five minutes of all of my shows doing exactly the same thing. Every show is different because the people are different. I do not know these people, but we're going to get to know them. You analyze them with me. Thank you for being quiet and being cooperative. Enjoy yourself now. Have a nice time. All of you stay, sit up your chair. This room is getting very cold. You begin to shiver and shake. All of you begin to shiver and shake. Your hands are getting cold. Rub your hands together. All of you, rub your hands together. Rub them faster, faster, faster. Cold hands, cold hands, cold hands. Terrible draft, terrible draft in the back of your neck. Terrible draft in the back of your neck. Rub your neck. All of you, rub your neck. Rub your neck to warm it up. Rub your neck to warm it up. Rub your neck to warm it up. Now your legs, rub your neck to warm it up. Rub your neck. Like cut, cut, freeze. Uh, freeze means don't move a muscle. Close your eyes, sleep. All right, sit up your chair. When I count to three this time, all of your stage, you are not uh, cold. You're hot and sticky. One, two, three. You're hot and sticky. Fan yourself. All of you, fan yourself, fan yourself. Faster, faster. Fan yourself. Hot room, hot room, hot room. Hot, hot. He's got a marvelous personality. Hot, hot, hot. That's good. Fan yourself. Fan, fan. Hot room, hot room. Your feet are beginning to burn an itch. Blow on your feet. Blow on your feet, all of you. Blow on your feet to cool them off. Blow on your feet to cool them off. Now you, your feet are, feet are hot. Blow on your feet. That's good, good. Blow on your feet. Hot shoes, hot shoes, hot shoes. And freeze in that position. Close your eyes. Do not move. Freeze. All right, you got to help me out. What's his name? What's, what? John. That's John? Oh, maybe he got confused because I was talking to the John down here. Oh, all right. Okay, John, you're on the stage. John on the stage, you're sitting in a hot chair. Hot chair, John. Hot chair, John. John has marvelous reflexes. Come on, John. Get it up, John. Come on, John. with John? Who's he with? Is he with a guy? Is he with a girl? What time do you want to get it tonight, honey? I better tell him now because this is, I mean, he sleeps very well. Look where his hands are and so on. Well, I'll, I'll start over there and I'll work my way. By the time I give to John, he'll realize what I said. We'll start over here. Okay. We're getting names now. Okay. What's her name? Judy. What, honey? Judy. Judy? Judy, hot chair. Hot chair, Judy. Now, that's good reflexes. Good reflexes, Judy. All right, turn around, Judy. Turn around, face the audience. Open your eyes, sweetheart. Open your eyes. Look at me. Do you think you're hypnotized, Judy? Yeah. Oh, good. What do you do for a living? I'm a security guard. You're a security guard. Oh, good. That's right. We have law enforcement. Okay, you a good security guard? Yes. That's marvelous. Sit down. You're naked, Judy. Naked. Naked, Judy. A naked security guard. We have up your gag. Naked, Judy. She's cute. Way down, deep sleep. Relax, sleep. Way down, deep sleep. Let me explain. When I tell them the hot chair, I'm not hurting them. It's not really hot. It's just my way of getting them up. John, hot chair. Good. Hot chair, John. Hot, hot chair, John. John, you're sitting. Bun warmers. Chair is getting hot, John. Come on, get it up, John. You can do it. Up, John. Up, John. Sleep, John. Think about how it is to get it up. Remember the good old days, John, when you were able to get it up. We'll get back to John. Okay, we have Judy. What's his name? He's great. What's his name? Renee. Renee, hot chair. Hot chair, Renee. Hot chair. Good reflexes. Thank you, Renee. Hi there, Renee. Think you're hypnotized? Uh, 
Well, not with all the humor that you're giving out. <laughs> Why? You're supposed to hear everything and know everything. You're making me laugh. Okay? That's good. I told you you don't miss the show. What do you do for a living? Well, I work with the Youth Services Division of Santa Monica Police. Oh, really? Oh, I love to work with kids. I was the honorary chairman of the Foster Parents Society and so on. I sit down here naked there, Renee. You're a naked person. Naked. Naked. Sleep way down deep sleep. You're not naked. He's a positive figure. Took two hands and a head to cover it up. Sleep. Renee, sleep. Don't move. Freeze means stop. Don't like to move. Okay, and what's her name? Sharon. Sharon, hot chair. Hot chair, Sharon. Hot chair. Oh, now that's great reflexes. Hi, Sharon. Hi. Do you think you're hypnotized, Sharon? I think so. Oh, good. What do you do for a living? I know it's all law enforcement tonight, but what do you do? I'm a lieutenant with Culver City Police Department. Culver City. A lieutenant? All right. All right. Hello there. Sit down and watch your boobs grow. Okay, we got good people, we got good people. Hot chair, John! <laughs> There's something I will say that will get into John's subconscious, I'm sure. What's her name? Terry. Terry Hot Chair. Hot Chair Terry. Hot Chair, open eyes. Hi, Terry, sweetheart. Face it this way. Think you're hypnotized? I don't know. You're, oh, no, you are. Oh, you're pretty. What do you do for a living? I work for the Santa Monica Police Department. And Animal Control Office. Animal Control. Do we have a group up here, gang? <laughs> Animal Control. What does that mean? I go after dogs. Go after dogs. I've been doing that for years and nobody gave me a badge. Okay, sit down. You're naked. Naked lady. Naked. Naked lady. Hey, naked. Oh, good. She doesn't care she's naked. Okay, sleep, sweetheart. Well, listen, if you had to go out in the alleys and get the little kitties, you'd go... Hot chair, John. Up, John. How in the hell do you get John up? John, you're sitting on the tack. John, when I count to three, you want to stand up. One, two, three, up, John. Oh, you have to make him want to. You want to. You want to do all these things. It's fun. Hi, think you're hypnotized, John? I think so. Yeah, you are. Ten, up! Oh, you already are. Oh, look at that body. All right. Okay, what do you do for a living? Uh, police officer, City of Manhattan Beach. City of Manhattan Beach, okay. These are your reflexes? <laughs> when I said hot chair, you just kind of slip, right? How come you don't move when I say all of you? Does it have to be John? Does it have to be Sir? Sir is preferable. <laughs> You're with the Manhattan Police Department, right? Yes, ma'am. What is your... Yes, ma'am. I've known... <laughs> yes, ma'am. I haven't called ma'am in a long time. What, what, what do you do with... Uh, what's your position? You're a captain. You're a captain. Oh, you're a captain. Well... Okay, sit down. You're naked, John. Naked John. I've always wanted a naked John, especially a police officer. You're a naked person, John. Oh, the Naked John. Naked. Naked. All of you. Sleep, John. See. Way down, deep sleep. All of you go deeper sleep. Deeper and deeper sleep. John finally got with it. <laughs> John, open your eyes. Look at me. Uh, you're not naked. I am. <laughs> sleep. Okay, now I'm just going to run through names. We have a great group, and they all can hear me loud and clear. Saw my voice, touching my hands, sent you deeper sleep. We have Judy, Renee, Sherry, Sharon. Okay, Judy, Renee, Sharon, Terry, and our star, John. Okay, when I count to three, obviously, you open your eyes, not awake, and set me chair. Obviously, you're very angry. There's a fly in your nose, so swat them off. One, two, three, all of you, sit in the air. Fly on the tip of your nose, on the very tip of your nose, all of you. You want to. It's on your nose, too, John. John. John has a fly. And everybody's a, get the fly off your nose, off your nose. Get the fly off your nose. Off your nose, John, not hers. Off your nose. Come on, John, move it here. Flies in your hair, and your hair, on top of your head, all of you, on top of your head, going down your back. Way down your back in your clothes. Way down your back in your clothes. Get the fly out. Get the fly out of your clothes. Come on, get them out, get them out. Tickles you, tickles you. It's going down the front of your clothes. Way down the front of your clothes. Get the fly out. The fly to the front of your clothes, John. 
Thighs in the front of your clothes. Wait, please close eyes, do not move. Close eyes. John's just the kind that's gonna go for the wrong fly. He's gonna take his time and he'll stick his hand in there. When I come to the office stations up your chairs, you're enjoying dirty movies. Uh, they're right up there watching their favorite movie stars getting it on one, two, three. When somebody loves you, it's no good unless he loves you. All the way, John likes that. Happy to be near you. La da dee da doo dee doo doo. Who are you watching? I can only think of a guy. That's Kent McCord. Huh? Kent McCord. Kent McCord. Who's the girl? Raquel. Oh. Raquel Welsh and Kent McCord. <laughs> That's a good one. Who are you watching? that Diana Ross would be ashamed of herself. All right. Who are you watching? John Wayne and Marina O'Hara. John Wayne and Marina O'Hara. You can always tell that's interesting. Who are you watching? Warren Beatty and Robert Redford. <laughs> Maybe she's working vice. What do I know? John, who are you watching? Yeah, Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda and who? I can't tell. You, you gotta tell me. I, I don't know. I mean, oh, you can't tell who it is? It's just Jane Fonda and somebody? Jane Fonda and Santa Monica. Jane Fonda and Santa Monica. <laughs> all of you sleep, way down deep sleep. Look at that. Jane Fonda just took on all of Santa Monica. <laughs> well, I count the overstays, sit up your chairs, and uh, string some beads and make a necklace. One, two, three. Bobbles and bangles. And bright shiny beads, tra la la ba da And bangles, and bright shiny beads, la. Notice when I stand over here. <laughs> Bobble. Oh, John's getting into that one. Do, 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 be, do. Do, 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 do. La dee da dee. Do you think he's excited about this? John, you just sold your thing. All of you sleep way down deep sleep. Relax, sleep. Now see, that he will do, that he will do, right? John, when I count to three, you'll open your eyes, you'll not awaken. You're gonna stand up and you're going to give a lecture, John because everybody in the audience is law enforcement. Everybody in the audience is law enforcement, and on the count of three, you are going to stand up and you are telling them and lecturing to them this new way, this new way that we're gonna do law enforcement, uh, the importance of bead stringing when you uh, capture uh, <laughs> somebody. On the count of three, you stand up and give a fantastic lecture because you're the big man. On the count of three, one, two, three, up. Nice round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for John. Up, John. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, from now on, when you arrest somebody, instead of advising them for Miranda, you will beat string them. <laughs> you will take a cord and string them up. Everybody will have that right. Everybody will be strung up once arrested. They will be hung outside the booking room until the watch commander comes by and the watch commander can okay the stringing. <laughs> Once the watch commander okays the stringing, then they can be incarcerated in their cell. Well, in the cell, you will remove their string. <laughs> After the string is removed, like all procedures, you will place it in their property box so it was not mixed up with anybody else's string. This is very important. I mean, they've all come here to hear this. You will make a full report for the watch commander. The watch commander will report to the division commander, and the division commander will report to the chief, and the chief will be responsible for all strings. All of you sleep. The rest of you do not move. 
Do not move as I'm speaking to somebody else. Do not move. Just all of you relax and sleep. I've got, I'm going to do the finger thing. I've got, he's so good. He's so good. John, open your eyes. Open your eyes. How, how many fingers do you have? Oh, what hand? <laughs> um, both hands, all together. Ten. Count them out loud from one to ten. Your seven is missing. Two. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, eleven. I want to try that again, one to ten, there's no seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> you see the man down front that I've been teasing, his name is John also, and he's a finger snatcher, and he stole your seventh finger. Now tell me you want it back. Give my finger back. <laughs> when I count to three, I want you to arrest that man, and I want you to read him his rights and tell him which... Uh, which law this is about, st about theft of your seventh finger. This is a special law, I'm sure. One, two, three. You're under arrest for finger snatching. <laughs> this is not funny. Don't you want your finger back? Uh, no, it doesn't bother It doesn't bother you? Sleep. Sleep. I'll get something that bothers him, all right? And when I count to three, John, open your eyes. And, uh, do not awaken. One, two, three, open your eyes. Look at me, John. Look at me. I'm a star. You got your finger back, but look, your thing is gone. Bye, bye, bye. He took your thing. Now, now, now you're gonna care. Now you're gonna care. Now read him his rights and arrest him and tell him, tell him which ordinance this is because he's got your thing. That's personal. I'm pissed off now. <laughs> I'm pissed off now. That's personal. Well, tell him. Give <laughs> me my thing back, boy. <laughs> Uh, just have your head. <laughs> well, maybe, it's on, maybe it's on the floor. Look for it. Maybe, maybe. What did it look like? What did it look like? I'll help you find it. Help you find it. Wait, she's in charge of animals. She'll help him find it. Uh, uh, um, Terry, open your eyes. Help, help him find He lost his thing, and you, you, you're with law enforcement with the animals. Why don't you, his thing, you know. Uh, John, open your eyes. Stand up. Would you explain to her about your thing? But t tell her what it looked like, you know, how big. I stole my thing. How big is it? Uh, a harder song. Harder song. I guess that would make a difference in how it looks, right? Yeah, I guess that would make a difference in how it looks. Oh, uh, uh, ter Terry, right? Terry, open your eyes. Go sit on your chair. That was fine. Thank you very much. The rest of you sleep right down. John, sir. Sit down in your chair over here, sir. And sleep, sir. All right, we'll do some improvisation. Anybody got an idea? I love this audience participation. Proposal. Proposal? How about the first man pregnant? Pro oh, that's good. First man pregnant. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I like that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. We'll go from Renee. <laughs> okay, when I count three, Renee, you are a great actor, and you're going to stand up. You're going to be very serious. You're not going to laugh. You are going to explain to all of these crime prevention people how you became the first man in the world to become pregnant. <laughs> On the count of you, one, two, three, up. Uh -huh. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that night that you told me that I should watch myself it was my responsibility to, to look out for myself. Well, I slept through that part. <laughs> so what happened? What happened? Oh, oh I'm feeling a contraction. <laughs> Why are you feeling a contraction? I'm in my third month. <laughs> Sleep. Well, I hope he doesn't have to stop to deliver any babies. When I count to three, you are a great blues singer, and you're going to sing the blues. I mean, you're going to really get down. Oh, I love that suggestion. On the count of three, you're going to sing the blues about... What's your favorite vegetable, sir? Zucchini. Zucchini. Good one. On the count of three, you're going to sing the blues about the man in the blue shirt down front who has lost his zucchini. One, two, three, go. Bad. And 
things are never nice. But when I look at your shirt, I think all twice. So yes, I hate blue shirts. Blue shirts in the afternoon. Oh yeah, I said I hate the color blue. And I really, definitely don't like you. <laughs> Your zucchini bag, it's just like your breath, and I hate that blue, and the green in your nostrils, and I hate that zucchini, I got that blue zucchini blue, yeah. You can't bend your legs. They are rigid legs, Renee. Try and sit down. Rigid legs. Love making. Please. Oh. Oh, I should be able to work that one out. Renee, open your eyes again. Uh, she was a, she's a big shot. Sharon, lieutenant, right? Sharon, lieutenant. Mm -hmm. Talk to Sharon. She's a lieutenant. Tell her what happened to your leg. Lieutenant, this is the result of a serious 11-3. This is this Did this happen on duty? This happened on duty. I need the benefits. <laughs> Freeze. When I count as you, Sharon, you are a great hypnotist, and you're going to hypnotize Renee's legs. <laughs> on the count of three, one, two, three. Close your eyes and just think about relaxing. Relax your face and your shoulders, your hands, your legs are relaxing, your knees are bending, they're starting to bend, they're getting very heavy, your feet are getting heavy. <laughs> okay, all the way to the floor, that's it, relaxing, okay, get your feet flat, all the way down. His went down, but yours went up. Oh. You're getting good at this police hypnosis stuff, right? Yeah. Can you hypnotize your own? Yes. You can? When I count to three, you will, try, uh, you will hypnotize your legs to go down, Sharon. However, when your legs go down, your arms will go up. I mean, he's losing total control over the body here. On the count of three, one, two, three. Okay, my legs are relaxing. They're starting to relax. I'm going down. Down, down, all the way to the floor. Completely relaxed. That's marvelous, Shane. Too. Right, now give me a few moments of time. I, because I, I want to do this thing. I want to explain to you about hypnosis and do a little serious stuff, and then we'll give them a screen test. All these stages take a deep breath, relax, and go deeper sleep. What I'm going to do is what I do in every single show. I'm going to take one of the people on the stage in what we call a cataleptic state. That means lock all the muscles in their body, make them rigid, suspend them between two chairs, and I do not do this to prove to you that they're hypnotized. I do it to show you how the mind works. Here's the times that you're hypnotized. Give yourself suggestions. One is before you fall asleep at night. You know that expression, be careful what you're thinking? That's what hypnosis is, just before the regular sleep. All right? The regular sleep is when you're really asleep. The hypnotic sleep is just before the regular sleep. And so before you go to sleep at night, give yourself a suggestion. Repeat it over and over again. Don't analyze it. Don't worry about it. And you'll get it going. Some people get it going the very next day. You know, like they'll say, oh, I want to get up and go fishing at 6 o'clock. And your mind wakes you up and you go fishing at 6 o'clock. Uh, going to work, going to school is a different story. You have to want it. You have chemicals in your brain that call endorphins. So when you're this relaxed, they go in your bloodstream, totally block pain completely. Watch, watch the control they have. All of your stages, not funny, it's serious. When I count to three, I want all of your stages to raise your right arm high in the air, light as a feather, one to three, right arm up high in the air, light as a feather. Now concentrate on your right arm. When I count to three, all of you make your right arm rigid as a piece of steel, one to three, rigid. Spread your fingers out, make your fingers rigid. Now when I count to three, all of you stage your right arm and your right hand will become cold and numb like you've had a shot of Novocaine. 
You have no feeling of pain in your right arm or your right hand on the count of three, one to three, cold and numb. Now, if you're with these people, don't get bugged, because I do this every show, even with little kids. I would never keep anybody on stage who's not hypnotized. I can tell by their eyes. They don't think they're hypnotized, because they don't know what being hypnotized means. They feel that, but they don't feel any pain. They just feel warmth. I could do it all day long. The only thing that happens is the hair would send off. You know what I could do? Wouldn't, but I could. I could take a cold object, like a pencil or something, and touch them and say, I am burning you. If they, if they buy it, what happens is, uh, if I said, you know, I was burning, they'd wake up the next day, and you would have a water blister from nothing but a suggestion. A lot of things are hypnosis that are happening even in our society now, but they're not given that name. Women have babies under hypnosis every day. It's called natural childbirth, uh, karate, yoga, any of the martial arts, all right? Those are forms of self-hypnosis. How can a person take a hand or a foot or a knee and make a, and, and make a break? You know, just take all that concentration and wacko. Uh, that's, that's a form of self Once you hear a singe, I love to do this. Watch this. This isn't hurt. It just usually stinks like hell. I love John. I adore him. He's absolutely adorable. Mm -hmm. Most people in our society use about a tenth of their brain. And I've taught over 45, close to 50,000 people know how to do self-hypnosis. So stay in touch, write, write to Showtime and so on. And uh, if you're interested, I'll, I'll help you out. Let me get their things down, their arms down. <laughs> when I count it through, I'll be lower your right arm. It's back to normal, one, two, three. Sleep, way down, deep sleep. Relax every muscle in your body. I'll be go deeper sleep. All right, I'll let the audience pick. I don't like to pick the one to make Ridge, I'll let the audience pick. Uh, who wants to pick? Um, okay, uh, sir, the man who went back over there, who would you like to see me make Ridge between the two chairs? John. John. Thank you. <laughs> okay, John, I got John, open your eyes, not awaken. Can I have your permission to stretch you between two chairs, promise not to hurt you? Stand up, show you kind of control you have. This is a beautiful fitting. It feels like a massage. And besides that, you get proves you're on it. Uh, face the audience, now face the audience, right? Put your legs together, arms your side, head back, now close your eyes, now just relax, every muscle in your body, John. Get a little bit heavy like a wet rag, totally relax, you got it. All right, John, in a few moments you'll be stronger than you've ever been before in your life. No fear, no pain, trust me. When I count to three, John, lock the muscles in your arms, rigid as a piece of steel, one or three, rigid. Spread your fingers out, make your fingers rigid, lock them tight to the sides of your body, rigid, elbows rigid, shoulders rigid, he's great. On the count of three, John, lock the muscles in your neck, one or three, neck rigid. On the count of three, back and chest rigid, one, two, three. On the count of three, stomach spine rigid, one, two, three. On the count of three, legs rigid, one, two, three. Very good, every muscle locked tight. Now when I count to three, John, fall backward. As you fall back, you become more rigid. We'll catch you. Arch your back up high in the air. You're as light as a feather, one, two, three, back. Rigid as a piece of steel. Every muscle your body locked tight. You cannot bend until I tell you, but you feel like you're floating on a cloud. Arch your back up high in the air. Freeze it. Want to give John a big hand? Now watch this. Watch this. Okay, watch this, gang. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you really what kind of control people have. Now, this is a special thing I'm doing just for you tonight. John, concentrate. You're very comfortable, totally rigid. You cannot bend. When I count to three, John, raise your left leg, light as a feather, high in the air. One, two, three. Left leg up. Now bring your right arm up, right arm up, and freeze it. Is that wild? All righty. That's control. All right, put your arm to your side. Keep your back up. Bring your leg down. And arch your back up. Oh, I love this body. <laughs> all righty, all righty, that's okay. Okay, let's get him down. He's great. All right, when I count to three, John, you may relax, but do not awaken one to three, relax. Another nice big round of applause for John. I'm thinking on you, John, but you're so nice. Thank you. <laughs> that proves you that you're hypnotized. So right there, John. All you sleep, all you sleep, on deep sleep. Anyway, gang, stick with it because it's fascinating. The power of the mind is fascinating. Okay, when I count to three, we're doing an improvisation. When I count to three, Terry and Sharon, both of you are great, uh, are great actresses, and you're playing the roles of reporters. Uh, you, Terry, you work for the LA Times, and you're interviewing me. Uh, and on the count of three, Sharon, you'll stand up. You work for the National Enquirer, interviewing me. Of course, naturally, both of you are going to get into it because LA Times and National Enquirer and me. <laughs> On the count of both of you, remember to face the uh, audience. What well, if you have problem action dialogue? Up. I'm here for my interview. I'm here for my interview. Who are you with? LA Times. Oh, really? Okay, what would you like to ask me? Oh, I'd like to know how many shows you do a week. How many shows I do a week? Well, right now I'm doing about three shows a week. Sometimes I do five and so on. Uh, you're from who? The National Enquirer. National Enquirer. What kind of question would you like to ask me? Uh, how much do you drink? Say moderate uh, to heavy. 
Well, uh, I, I really, I don't drink at all. I never drink. I, I don't have to drink. You see, I have the power of my mind working for me. I'll be right back. Would you like to ask? Yeah, we'll write this down. How many, uh, how much do you drink? <laughs> As I was just telling the National Enquirer, I don't drink at all. I really don't. No, I, ha I just use relaxation and so on. Uh, was that drugs or for, uh... No, I, I, what type of relaxation do you use? I do a lot of deep breathing, you know. <laughs> yes. And do, do you have to write this down? Uh, you, do, you don't have a hidden microphone or anything on you, do you? No, we always misquote anyway. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of you slay. <laughs> yeah. Did you want to ask me another question? This is getting fun. Okay, um... Well, you think of one. I'll go back to the inquire. They always have questions, you know. Uh, are you currently dating someone? Uh, yes, many. Many? Uh, how many would you say, approximate? It's hard to get an exact count. Oh, about a dozen and a half. Uh -huh. Oh, anybody in here special? They're all special. I see. Uh, do you uh, frequently have parties? Lots of parties. I'll be right back. You're a nice lady from the Times, right? Uh, you want to give me a review? Would you come and review me? You're wonderful. What do you want to know? Uh, I think I have enough. I can go back and make it up quite nicely. Okay. It's funny. All these things are not out. <laughs> oh, just sit down and relax, please. Huh? Oh, have him do the story. Oh, yeah. Let me do, let me do the stories they wrote. Can I ask him that? All right. When I count to three, Sharon, you are from the National Enquirer. You're sitting behind your typewriter. And you are going to read out loud what you've written about Pat Collins from the interview one to three. This interviewer interviewed Pat Collins this evening at the theater while she was on stage. Uh, while she denied the rumors of her heavy drinking, she did admit to certain types of relaxation, although she was not specific. Uh, she admitted to uh, several unspecified relationships with dozens of men. <laughs> stating that all of them were special. Uh, this reporter thoroughly enjoyed interviewing Ms. Collins. Sleep. I will sleep. When I count as we tarry, you will open your eyes not awake, and then you're going to dictate into the machine the, your uh, interview with Pat Collins. One, two, three. I interviewed Pat Collins today, and uh, someone from the National Enquirer was there, and you should have heard the stories. I mean, the questions that she asked, they were really interesting about Pat Collins and how much she drinks and how much sex she has and who she has the sex with and how many times they do it and what positions they do it in. And I'll tell you, I think I'm going to go get a job at the National Enquirer. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, okay, when I count the overstage, you open your eyes, fill up your chairs in your right hand. You've got the biggest glass. Glass, not ass. Biggest glass you've ever had before in your life. And it's your favorite drink, whatever you like to drink. Drink up and enjoy one, two, three. Well, I think I'm going out of my head. Going out of my head. Over you, drink up. Over you. And it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And smaller, don't they all? <laughs> Get small. Over you, out of my head. Over you. Sleep all of you, way down deep sleep. Deep sleep.